This is your first video lecture, which means it's your first note taking that you'll have to do. You can take notes on your own time. Um, you can pause it, you can start it, you could do whatever. This is for your choice. What is going on with my hair? Sorry, ADD. Um, so we're gonna go through this. We're gonna go through the lab equipment and you can take notes as you feel that you need to. You will need to know this stuff when we're in labs and stuff. We'll start with the stuff that you will use that's not inside the classroom. So this right here that you'll be using is called a meter stick, not a yard stick. They're two totally different things. So we're not gonna use this side to have the inches. We're always gonna use the centimeter side. This is a meter stick. It is, I believe, longer than a yard stick. I'm pretty sure by like a couple of centimeters. Um, so that's something we'll use on a regular basis in this class. You'll also have this, which is a thermometer. And you'll be using this during chemistry um, class quite a bit as well. Um, I don't think so much in physics. I can't remember everything, but so if it's silver down here, it's mercury. If it's blue or red, it's alcohol. And so the little lines are here. To read it properly, you hold it um, in such a way that it's right at your angle. Again, if I was, if I had liquid, I'll use my beaker. Again, something you also need to know. Um, I'll, I'll go back to the thermometer. But the beaker on the side, this tells you what size it is right there. So this is a 600 milliliter beaker. But you'll notice the lines only go to 500 because 600 is right to the brim. So when I say pull out a 600 milliliter beaker, this is the one you have. The drawers all have different, uh, same equipment. So you'll be, you'll be working with that. Now I'm gonna get some water here so you can see this. Whenever we do our thermometer, this is what we're going back to. Whenever we do our thermometer and we use the thermometer, we're going to put it in, we're going to hold it suspended. We do not want to set it like this because then it takes the temperature of the glass. So we don't want to set it like that. What you want to do is hold it in the middle of the thing, not touching the sides, not touching the bottom. Hold it in the middle. And you're going to hold it there for one minute, not 30 seconds, but one minute. And then when you're done for one minute, don't pull it out and read it because now you've taken the temperature of the air. You want to take the temperature of the water. So you're going to keep it suspended in the water and then you're going to bring it to eye level and you're going to take the temperature. So that's how you work with monitor. Beakers are meant for mixing um, and heating up. They're not very good at measuring. They have measurements on the side. If we want an approximate, if I say get about 50 milliliters of water or, or isopropyl or something like that, then you, you can use a beaker. But if I say I want 26 milliliters of something, then this is not what you use. This is not a good measuring tool. It is not accurate. In fact, what you will use is a graduated cylinder. And a graduated cylinder is what you use to measure what volume is being delivered. Now usually there's a guard up here. You'll hold on just a second. I'm back. Okay. Usually there's a guard like this. And the guard is meant to protect it. It is not meant to measure. You don't want it down here. You want it up at the top. It is meant for measuring. So I'm going to turn you so you can see. So what happens is, is when you knock it over, it protects it. It doesn't move, it doesn't break, it protects it. So the moment you knock it over, it helps protect it. You hit it too hard, of course it's gonna shatter. But at least this way, this gives it some protection. And again, this, there are two different sizes. This is 100 milliliter, this is 25. You, these ones you will see up at the top. So you will see those. So this one's like right here. So. The other thing you will see is an evaporating dish that looks like this. I'm going through the lab drawers as you do. Evaporating dish is used to put liquids, small liquids in there so it can evaporate it faster. Um, we put it on a ring stand and we evaporate it quickly. So that's that. Then we have what is a watch glass. It looks like this. This is a watch glass. Usually goes on the evaporating dish. Now. There is a hole and it helps. If we want to keep things in, this is where it goes. Otherwise, we put stuff on top of this to evaporate. We don't usually heat this up because the glass will shatter. So we don't usually use that. 
Um, also, you have glass stirring rods that look like this. They're just a glass rod, and you meant it's meant to just stir your your liquids because this won't contaminate any of your liquids. It won't attach, so it won't take things from other liquids. But you do have to wash it every single time. Then you have what is called a funnel. It's meant to filter different solids from liquids. You have a crucible and a crucible lid. Looks like this. They go right together. Um, they're meant to heat up solids at very, very high temperature. Then you have what is called a spot plate or a chem plate. What you saw in lab was one that looked like this. The ones in your drawers look like this. They are meant to mix small amounts of liquid. I mean like droplets amount of liquid. Um, so when we use the eyedropper or the pipette, in which case the eyedropper looks like this. The pipette is the plastic one, which is, you'll see when I get it out. Um, you don't have to worry about that now. You have your Erlenmeyer flask. Again, just like the beaker, it's going to be on the side. It says 250 milliliters, but notice there's no 250. It is 200 milliliters. So this is an Erlenmeyer flask, spelled E-R-L-E-N-M-E. Y-E-R. That's Erlenmeyer flask, and this is meant to stir, heat up. Again, not super great at measuring. It's like the beaker. Approximate measurement is okay, but we'd rather use the graduated cylinder whenever we have to measure liquids. And that's everything out of this drawer. So your second drawer, when you go into that, you have this, which is a ring clamp. It goes on the ring stand. And then you have this, which is a clay triangle. Well, what's the clay triangle do, Miss Crandall? Great question. Here, let me show you. So those small, if I wanted you to heat up, let's say everybody loves gold. No, gold's too soft. Let's say we're going to heat up zinc. So we're going to put a small amount of zinc in here. And we're going to cover it into our crucible. Then we're going to put it on the clay triangle, just like that. And then the clay triangle goes on the ring clamp. And the ring clamp has and then you have the Bunsen burner that's underneath here, heating it up, so you're never touching this. Now, those tongs that everybody was agreeing or disagreeing on, oh, those are not tongs. These are your tongs, okay? They're technically called crucible tongs. So what happens is you're heating stuff up like this. There's a reason why there's a hole like this, so I can come in, and scoop it out just like that. And I don't ever have to touch it. And I can put it back. Okay? Some people like to do it a little differently. It's taken me years to master this. So people struggle with this. So what I have them do is use the pinchers, pinch the lid, pull it off, set it down on the lab bench, and then you can kind of pinch the inside as long as you don't drop it and you can grab it that way and set it down for it to cool. So it's another way you can use that. The reason why we try to avoid that way is because cross-contamination of the liquids, but that is another way of doing it. These are what we call hot hands, and I don't know why they're set in the door. They're usually up on, right behind me actually, they're usually right there. They're meant, now, don't be like your teacher. Your teacher has no feelings in her fingers when it comes to hot and cold. So what it is, is when you have something hot, um, if you have a beaker and it's heating up, heating up, heating up, and you don't want to touch the beaker, that's what it's used for, is to hold it. Just like that. They have these little suctions that are like um, octopuses, and it just, it's easier to grab like this. Okay? So you also have what is called beaker tongs, which look like this. These are beaker tongs. Okay? They're meant to grab the beaker, just like that. I don't like them because I'm afraid I'm going to crush. You have to apply some pressure. And so what happens is they are in your drawer, but I feel like I'm going to crush and break the glass. And I don't want to start my experiment over, so I don't use them. I use the hot hands. So, or the mitts, that's the other thing they're called. And then you have what's called, now for most of you, you would say tweezers, but the scientific term is forceps. Okay? Yeah, they're tweezers. But in science terminology, we, we call them forceps. Okay? So that's everything out of that. Oh, my favorite, the scoopula. 
I love that word, scupula. Scupula. I, I just love it. Okay, so it's a spatula is what it is. It's meant to scoop things out. That's all it is. And then the last piece that you need to know is your test tube rack, which is used to fill in the test tube. Now you also have at your stations, you have Bunsen burners and you have um, triple beam balances, but that's pretty much all the equipment you're gonna use this year. They're all at lab stations. They're all right there for you. Um, again, get familiar with it because if I say you're gonna use your scupula today, you need to know what that is. That ends this on lab equipment. So um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it's easier for you and you can go back and review as many times. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on your next video.